In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can create shader to get a visual feedback of our enemy getting hurt and also how we can use that same shader to apply it to our player. This is the 13th episode of this series of 2D RPG uh, created in Golo 4.1. Shader is quite a big topic when you are making programming and it's quite an intermediate topic because it's a, it's a bit complex, it can become very easily complex. So this course is going to be a sort of introduction about how to use a shader in Godot know that you have website like Godot Shader that is very good website for having a sort of idea of how to do how to use Shader uh, in Godot you have a lot of example and it's like a free and open source website that is focused on Shader solely so if you are interested I will put the link in the description you can find it me personally that's how I've learned to use Shader in Godot and I really recommend that website because it's a very good one if you don't have the asset you can find it on my itch.io the link is in the description and you can also see my game Lone Knight that is available for wishlist and will be released next year. With all that being said, let's get started. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a way to get feedback when we are smashing our enemy because right now we can kill him, but we don't have any way to see if we have hit him or not. And so for that, what we're going to do is we're going to use something that is called a shader, which is a very, very uh, handy things to know when you are programming. So for that, we're going to go to our enemy and we're going to open the main scene by clicking on that little icon right here. And first, uh, we need to think about how the shader works. Shader works on um, asset, on graphical asset. So here, what hold our graphical asset is our sprite 2D. If I toggle the visibility off, I don't see my uh, my enemy anymore. So I, I just need first to click on my sprite 2D. And then I need to go to material right here. It's in Canva item, material. You click here on material, you can see you did here it is empty, you click on it, and here you have the choice between Canva item material or new shader. We want to create a shader, so new shader material. Then after that, you get that sort of, uh, of um, sphere here, you click on it, and then you're going to be able to create a shader again by going on shader, empty, and here, new shader. It's going to... Uh, open the dialog box for like saving the shader so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna click here on the uh, um, folder icon and i'm gonna go back um, on my raise folder right here and here i'm gonna create a folder and that folder i'm gonna call it simply shaders like this but i'm not gonna name my shader enemy because my shader i'm gonna use it also in my player so i'm gonna call that shader earth like this and now I, click in, I can click on open. So now I can click on create. And now we have that sort of like white stuff that pops up here. So how do we edit our shader editor? So for that, we need to go into our shader and here we need to click here on earth shader. It's gonna open our shader editor right here. And here we're gonna be able to tap the code that we want. You know that you can also detach that uh, window if you want. You can click here and that, uh, that's gonna help you to like um, reattach that uh, um, that window wherever you want and if you don't want to have it like this you can just close it and it goes back to where it was uh, before so here uh, first let's uh, have a brief um, explanation of the type of shader that we're going to use here we are making a 2d game so we need to use canva item canva item is the type of shader that we use for making 2d game if you go to show to help search help and you type shader right here uh, you're going to have the uh, class of the shader and you're going to see that on enumeration we have a uh, five type of shader. We have spatial that we use for 3D, canva item that we use for 2D, we have particles, uh, we have sky and we have fog. So here we are on canva item because we are making a 2D game. So uh, here what we need to do first is we need to change the... Um, uh, the color of our uh, sprite and so for that what we can do here is like on the void fragment fragment is a, is a um, sort of like uh, function that is similar to process uh, in shader here what we need to do is we need to do vec4 and we're gonna call that vec4 color and here i'm gonna set it equal to a vec4 and then we're gonna put one comma one comma one comma one and we're, and we're gonna close with a semicolon then here what we can do is we can take our color and we're gonna assign it by using a built-in uh, a built-in things in our shader that is color with in all cap and we're gonna set that to be equal to color and we close with a semicolon 
In a shader, you always need each line to close it with a semicolon. That's something that works this way. It's like sh a shader is not like a GD script. It's like something that's uh, similar to a JavaScript, basically. So now that we have that, we can see that we have an entire <laughs> sprite that is uh, that is changed, which is not what we want. What we want here is we want to actually uh, just get the portion of our uh, enemy that is filled up. Here it fills everything. So we need to make some change. Uh, first, uh, we're going to keep our VEC4 color, but here we're going to change the VEC4 here and we're going to replace it by texture like this. And in here, we're going to put texture in all cap, and then we're going to put our UV. UV here is the transparency of my um, of uh, my sprite. And so you can see I type UV, and then you can see that the transparency go back to zero. So now what I need to do is I need to change the RGB uh, channel of my image. So for that, I need to just get color dot RGB. Color is the um, variable we have created right here. And here, I need to set it to be equal to mix. And then I'm going to just do color dot dot RGB. And then here I'm going to put a VEG3. I'm going to use a VEG3 because like uh, we have separated our UV, we just need to have a VEG3 here. So here I'm going to put 1, comma, 1, comma, 1. And then I'm going to go out of the first parenthesis. I'm going to put dot RGB. And then I'm going to uh, make something for the UV. So I'm going to just put a comma and then I'm going to put 1 for the UV. So it's going to fill... Uh, everything in white. I just need to put a semicolon and now I'm going to put everything in white. And you can see that's the case. So now that's what I want uh, right here. I want that when my enemy is hit, I want it to be displayed like that before a split second. But here what is annoying with that method is that if we want to change our color, it's a bit fiddly to type the value of our color with like 1 and 1 and 1. So what we can do is we can do something else that is way better, which is that we can uh, globally store our uh, color into an export variable that help us to uh, pick the color by just like having access to the, the, the wheel of the color. So that's what we're going to do uh, right now. So for that here, what I want to do is before my void fragment, I want to create variable that I can uh, export into the inspector. So for that in, um, in uh, the shader language, we need to type uniform. And here we're going to uh, put a vec4. And that vec4 is going to be uh, called flash underscore color. And here I'm going to uh, put that vec4 at source underscore color. And here I'm going to set it equal to vec4. And I'm going to put... 1.0 and don't forget the semicolon. So now that this is done, I can create another uniform. And here, that uniform, I'm going to call it flash underscore modifier. And I'm going to give it an heat range like this. And that heat range is going to be uh, 0.0 here, 1.0 here. And I'm going to close my parenthesis right there. And here, I'm just going to remove that and I'm going to put equal one and I'm going to close with a semicolon. This is the this is for the transparency basically. That's what it is. So now what I can do here is that I can change that and here in my color RGB I can change the vec the vec free that we have created here. I can change it with the flash color that I have here. So here I can go and I can do flash color dot RGB like this. And then I can change the one here to flash underscore modifier. And so now it's going to take those parameters. And for example, here, if I get to my flash modifier, if I put zero, let's see what happened. You can see that now uh, it goes back to normal. But if I'm just going to uh, toggle the visibility off of the hitbox and stuff. So here at zero, you can see that we see our uh, image normally. But if I put one, you can see that it's going to be white. And if I put 0 0.5, for example, you can see that it changed a bit the transparency and so on and so on. So here, what I want to do is like I'm I want to leave it at 0 and I want to toggle that through code. So now, basically, the good thing that we have done with that is like we can save. And if I go back to my shader now, we have access to shader parameter. Uh, and here we have our flash color. And here now, uh, with that lines of code that is right here, I can access the color wheel and I can choose the color that I want to display. So for example, I can put something like pink like this. And if now I change my flash modifier here, if I put it, uh, so I'm going to save it like this. If I put it at one, 
you can see that now it appears it appears pink for example i'm gonna leave it at white because that works better uh, and what i want to do here is maybe i want to put that at 0 0.5 like this uh, actually i can put it here 0 0.5 like this voila so now uh, we're gonna use something like that and we're gonna trigger that through code when we get it so how do we uh, do that so the best way to do this is to go to our um, to our code. So us, we're gonna go here, and here we have an eat box area enter. I'm just gonna retoggle those one here, and so here, what we can do is we can call a function that we're gonna uh, uh, create right now. So the function I'm gonna call it function um, flash, like this. For now, I'm gonna pass. And what I want is uh, in that function flash, I want to change the parameter that we have of our shader. So here, what I can do is I can access my sprite 2D. So what I'm going to do is like I'm going to do dollar sign sprite 2D. Then I can get the material, material, not move local, material, material. This is basically, it goes to the sprite 2D. It goes to the tab here, material, like that. And then here, what we can do is we can uh, set the shader parameter. So for that, we just need to do dot set underscore shader underscore uh, parameter. Parameter, I can... Uh, actually, it's not parameter, it is param. <laughs> so here, I just need to do... Uh, I just need to open parentheses, and here I'm going to call my flash underscore modifier. So the uniform uh, variable that I've created right here. And what I need is I need to set it to the, to the amount I want. So here, for example, I'm going to put at 0 0.5. This one here, I'm going to re-put it at 0. And here, through code, I want to change it at 0 0.5. And so now what I can do is I can do an await. And then here, I'm going to get underscore tree. Here, I'm going to create a timer. Create a timer like this. And the timer, I'm going to put it at 0 0.3. And then I'm going to call timeout. And then I'm going to reset the, uh, the shader param to be zero, like this. And so now, when my uh, hitbox is going to be triggered, what I can do is I can remove one elf of my enemy. And I can also call my flash function, like this. So now let's have a look and let's see if it works. So I'm going to launch a game. I'm going to come here. And it doesn't work. Why is that? Shader param, so I think it's parameter, parameter, and here parameter, something like this. It has changed like between versions, so up, oh, voila, now you can see it. And so now that's good, and so we have a way to um, uh, see if we have feedback. We, I can increase, I think, the, uh, the shader here at 0 0.7, and let's see, yeah, it works better this way. Up là, like this. And if you want to put it like completely at the max, you can just put here one and that will work too. So up, I just launch and you can see it works fine as well. So that's good. So now we know how to create a shader. And the good thing with this is that we can also uh, use the same method and put it on our player. So I can go back on my main level. I can go to my player here, my sprite. And then here I can go to material on my Canva item in the inspector. I can go to material. I can click here on material empty. I can get new shader material. I can click here again. Then here on uh, shader empty, what I can do is I can load a shader. And I can go to my... Uh, my path. So where is it? Where did I put it? Uh, it's not here. It's not this one. It's not this one. Where did I put my shader? Shader. I'm going to put here. This one right there. So I'm going to put it here. And so what I can do now is I can do the same things that we have done into our uh, enemy. So I can just copy that function, for example. I can just copy it like this and i can go back to my uh, enemy uh, my player script here i just need to to go back to it here and under dead uh, i can come here and i can just tap this and then when i um, get my um, my enemy uh, that eats me then i can trigger that the thing here is we don't have any uh, function that um, goes to our uh, player so on our player we need to click on it and we're going to add a new uh, a new um, node it's going to be an area 2d 
and that area 2D, I'm gonna uh, uh, I'm gonna attach a collision shape to it, and that collision shape gonna be a sphere like for my enemy. So now that area 2D, I can call it it box like this, and then now what I can do is like I can just adjust it. I can go to collision shape and I can change the color. So I'm gonna put something uh, reddish like this like that voila and so now i can use the signal of the hitbox and i can connect it to my player so i can go here to hitbox here to node and i can go to um i think area enter would be good connect and i can connect it on my player and so now here i can call uh, for example my function uh, flash and i can also go to my player data because my player data are uh, like uh, I actually, I don't need to, to, do, to use my player data. I can just here uh, call my flash function. So here I can just come and I can do flash like this. And then that will be good. So now I just need to uh, adjust that hitbox. box. So that hitbox box is going to be uh, collision is going to be on uh, layer. I'm going to put it on layer four and it can collide with mask uh, three, I think. That's what my enemy was, if I remember well. So I can come back here, I can open my scene and just have a look. So my layer is on three, mask two and four, like this. I can I, I can make it collide with my uh, my uh, player inbox. And so now what I can do is like night will collide automatically with my uh, my enemy. And so here normally it should work. So let's have a look. Okay, you can see it works. You can see it works perfect there was like a slight bug at the beginning i think i know where it comes from it's because um my shader on my player so i just need to come here my shader was on 0 0.5 voila so here i just need to put it at zero like that and so now with that done this is good one thing you can do as well is here you can put local to scene like this this will make sure that it can't be triggered uh, a lot of time and you can do the same for like enemy you can come to our enemy scene sprite 2d and here on resource you can put that on local to scene and so now for example i'm gonna go back to my main level here my tab Go back on 2D. I'm gonna go to my enemy here, and what I'm do, uh, what I'm gonna do is like I'm gonna duplicate it. So I'm gonna do Control D. I'm gonna create another instance. Control D. I'm gonna create another instance. So now I'm gonna launch the game, and now if I just smash this one, you can see that the other one are not concerned. But if we haven't automatically click on local to scene, we could have like some bugs sometimes that will. Um, trigger the shader uh, for every other um, node that has the same shader. But because we have made it local to scene, it doesn't happen. I hope it makes sense. <laughs> so, but that's basically the, the thing that we are doing. And so now with all that done, but we have now created a shader. We have seen how we can create a basic shader that we can use to um, uh, destroy our enemy. And you can see also my, sh my, my shader is activated by, by other things so like this one. So here, that's something that we need to fix. So what I can do here is I can go back to my crate and here on my crate, yes, I have one and one. So normally it shouldn't uh, collide, but on it box, it collide, it's on three. So here I can put it on five, for example. And so let's have a look. Now it doesn't collide, but if I just use my sword, it works. So that's good. So that's perfect. So now we have like the basic of shader. So that's a big thing that we have done today because shader is a very advanced uh, topic. And so I will see you now in the next uh, video. So that's it for me. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it's the case, don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Me, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.